the complex reasoning behind the Biden administration's contentious approval of the Willow Project. Interior Secretary Deb Holland met with prominent environmentalists and indigenous groups opposed to the Willow oil drilling project about two weeks before the Biden administration approved it. The project, which was set to extract millions of barrels of oil from Alaska's National Petroleum Reserve, was opposed by both groups. She was persuaded to reject the sizable Conoco Phillips drilling project by those voters. For the individual she was meeting with, Holland explained that the agency had to make difficult decisions. The, the aforesaid, it is the, the, the others. There is also a the of it, we have. She choked up about it, according to sources in the meeting, which they took to mean that she was personally opposed to the idea. One source stated that it was literally clear how difficult this was for her to be in. After months of internal deliberations, the Biden administration officially greenlit the massive oil drilling project on Monday amid fierce pressure from the state's congressional delegation and major pushback from environmental groups, the latter of which will now attempt to stop the project in court. Holland posted a video on Twitter on Monday night in which she referred to Willow as a difficult and complicated problem that was inherited from the Trump administration, which had initially authorized a more substantial version of it in 2020. For several weeks, White House Press Secretary Karina Jean-Pierre publicly maintained that Holland and the Department of Interior would make an independent decision regarding Willow. Numerous sources, however, informed CNN that it was anything but. They asserted that the decision to approve Willow was primarily political and legal in nature and had nothing to do with the environment or the global warming problem. We recognized some time ago that this was going to be a decision that was eventually made at the White House level, not only by top leaders, but actually with the president's direct participation, Republican Senator Lisa Murkowski of Alaska told CNN on Monday. I believe a decision had been made some time ago that this was at the highest political level. This was not something that was ultimately going to remain with the Secretary of the Interior. According to a government official, the Interior Department made the final decision despite consultation with the White House, meetings with Alaskan legislators at their request, and working through legal restrictions. On the weekend before the announcement, Holland called legislators and spoke extensively with Alaskan natives and other groups on both sides of the project, but the secretary's name was conspicuously missing from the official document that confirmed its approval. Instead, Interior Deputy Secretary Tommy Bodro's name was on the document. According to Alaskan lawmakers, Bodro served as Interior's point person on the initiative. Willow doesn't track with Holland's leadership at all, according to one environmentalist. It's been a while since I've done this, but I've been meaning to for a while now. Sources claim that the Willow decision was contentious within the Biden administration, even within the White House itself, for a president who ran on a platform of banning new fossil fuel drilling on public land and has been intensely focused on the impact of the climate crisis and the nation's clean energy transition. Was there anyone in the administration actively trying to kill this? Without a doubt, said Murkowski. I believe there were still people working to kill this, said the speaker, up until the decision was posted. Whether or not they wished to. President Joe Biden and a small group of his senior advisors met for over an hour with three members of the Alaska congressional delegation, who all encouraged him to quickly approve the project, around the same time that Holland was meeting with supporters. GOP Senators Murkowski and Dan Sullivan, along with Democratic Rep. Mary Peltola, told reporters on Monday that they engaged in a multifaceted pressure campaign during their meeting with Vice President Biden. Sullivan remarked, We tag-teamed it really well. There was never a problem we didn't try to solve. The effects of the 45 executive orders Biden had already signed, which Sullivan described as locking up Alaska's economic growth, are depicted on a map that Sullivan brought. The president was informed by Peltola that she thought Willow was an example of a just and well-managed switch from dirty energy to clean energy, and that it would help the underprivileged communities on Alaska's North Slope. The project, the lawmakers emphasized, could produce more than 180,000 barrels of oil per day, 
which could help keep gas costs low for Americans and lessen the nation's reliance on foreign oil. The transition from fossil fuels to alternative energies has Peltola's full backing, but he added that it won't happen overnight. And this endeavor, at least for Alaska, is a crucial component of transition. The fact that ConocoPhillips had existing leases in the region, however, and that this presented the administration with difficult legal challenges, according to Murkowski, was the one that might have had the greatest effect of all the points they made. There was no getting around the reality that these were actual, legal lease rights, according to Murkowski. The administration, was, going to have to support reality, whether they, wanted to or not. Two government officials told CNN that the administration believed its options were limited. According to the sources, the Biden administration concluded that it would have been against the law to completely reject or significantly scale back the initiative. They might have been subject to severe fines as well as legal action from ConocoPhillips if they had chosen to explore those options. Inside the White House and the administration, there was a perception that the Interior Department had been presented with a difficult decision, if they had tried to stop ConocoPhillips, an administration official said, they could have lost in court, accrued fines in the billions, and the oil company would still have been permitted to drill. The general consensus was that they should attempt to alter the project in other ways, such as by giving federal land and water in Alaska more protections. Officials from the administration emphasized additional measures they were taking on Sunday and Monday in an effort to lessen the effects of the project. These included taking steps to protect up to 16 million acres in the National Petroleum Reserve and off the coast of northern Alaska from further fossil fuel drilling. ConocoPhillips and the Alaska delegation notched a major victory by getting three drilling pads approved, meaning they can extract over 90 percent of the oil they sought. The administration pointed out that it had reduced the project's size by nearly 70,000 acres, but they nonetheless scored a major victory. The upcoming court dispute There is still conflict on Willow. All parties are now preparing for a judicial challenge from environmental organizations, who intend to file a lawsuit in an effort to halt the project. An environmental legal organization called Earth Justice has been putting together a complaint against the project. Earth Justice attorneys are currently reviewing the ruling, but they have already begun to outline their civil defense. The group's lawyers say the Biden administration's authority to safeguard surface resources on Alaska's public lands includes taking steps to reduce planet warming carbon pollution, which Willow would eventually add to. ConocoPhillips and environmental organizations are battling the time. Only during the winter construction season, which could end as early as April based on the weather, can Willow be constructed. Construction could be delayed for at least a year if organizations are successful in obtaining an injunction to halt or postpone the project. According to Murkowski, the administration will probably soon be required to appear before a court and defend the Willow project alongside ConocoPhillips and Alaska state attorneys. Despite the modifications, Murkowski stated, I think it's fair to say that the work from Interior, working with the other agencies, and Conoco, I'm told that everyone feels that we've got a very strong case that will survive the legal challenge. But we need to move quickly to the court, so.